So welcome back if this is your first time here. My name is Candice aka Aces Joy and I make a lot of different random videos on my channel uh, but I make homeschool videos as of like a couple of years ago. However, I wanted to finally sit down and tackle the biggest question that I've received my entire life and that a lot of you all comment about today on the channel and that is socialization. Um, especially when you're homeschooling an only child, which I am. Most of you probably already know that, but again, if you're new, you don't. So um, I recommend checking out the description box. I will post a link to the homeschool playlist as well as just like some fun fast facts about my homeschool experience so you don't have to watch all of those videos and you're kind of, you have context. I don't mean to make this sound dramatic in any way, but it's like a very, um, I guess kind of like personal experience and topic for me and I want to be as helpful and as transparent as possible without um, I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so just bear with me as I like go through this. I'm going to switch this window because this is the trials and tribulations of socialization um, are sometimes the impetus for making this kind of educational choice for your family. Um, so we all know that there's a lot of muck that comes with like kids being together sometimes. Your kid might be at school now and they're being bullied and they're like, enough of it, like, can I just be homeschooled? Um, or you might be choosing to homeschool because you don't want your child to be subjected to um, some of the plethora of socialization issues that happen among peers as well as with um, like teachers and administrators, right? The flip side of that coin, because I'm a huge, huge proponent of like balance and duality in life is that um, there's so much good that comes from kids like being together and socializing. Part of that good is just learning basic social skills. That's some of the things I think, um, unfortunately, but fortunately, um, we all have a standardized example right now with COVID-19 and we heard all of the reports and all of the anecdotal evidence of um, how difficult it was not only for adults but obviously kids who are in these very social periods of their lives having this kind of isolation. I'm not going to go into the science of it because there's a lot of people more experienced and more well-spoken than I who can give you those reasons um, but in a nutshell yes socialization is important and if you're homeschooling and you're getting that question from people and you're feeling a little defensive or like you want to brush it off um, you know if someone asks you that even though they could be prying um, it's absolutely fine and truthful to acknowledge and say yes socialization is important that's actually one of the main things that you know um, we want to make sure we're building into their environment um, so don't feel like someone's making a big deal out of something because it is a real concern. It's a concern you should have as a parent because it's part of your child's development just as much as their home or what they're learning in books. So most homeschool kids a lot of times are going to get basic built-in socialization from their siblings because a lot of times if you look at homeschool families it's like these big families and all the kids are around the table and going on field trips and doing all these things. Um, so there's a little part of that that for a lot of families you're already going to have that built in. However, um, you know, I, at the same time, obviously families can like get on each other's nerves. And even if you have like the best kids ever and your family's super close and all of your kids like love each other and are best friends until you're 90, they still might need a break from each other. Um, and sometimes you still just need um, socialization with different people. You know, like when you're in a family, you're being taught the same values and everyone's kind of like in step with each other, even though we all have different personalities. And so like you're used to operating within the system of that family unit. Um, when kids are socializing outside of that, they get to, again, exercise those skills and have that confidence in spaces um, that are not their own. So my experience as a homeschool kid was quite lovely overall. Um, I have really fond memories of my childhood. I had so much fun when I was a kid. Like I spent hours watching PBS. I spent hours playing with my Barbies and like reading books. My nose was always in a book. Um, I spent a lot of time playing with my parents. Uh, my parents were very mindful of the fact that I was the only kid um, and that wasn't necessarily the goal. They absolutely like wanted to have more kids but um, as you're very familiar with a lot of people families have fertility issues and so 
I was the only one. Um, and so like, they were very mindful of like, oh, she wants to, you know, have a fashion show with her Barbies. And my mom would get down there and be like, okay, like we're having a fashion show. And like, I had this hunchback of Notre Dame tent. I would have that up and so sometimes it would be up the whole weekend. If I was really lucky, maybe it would be up the whole week and then my parents would be like, okay, this is taking up half the living room, like we gotta pull this down. But I would put it up and I'd like bring all my toys and like my um, pillows, I'd make a little pal on the floor and then, you know, I'd get to stay up late and watch movies and that kind of stuff, so it was like a sleepover. We lived in a college town, so like there weren't any kids my age that like lived in the neighborhood or like on the street. A couple who owned the house next door to us had a girl who was two years older than me. Um, and so they were at the house at least a few times a year, especially over the summers, because they would come over and like clean up the house and get it prepped for like the new set of students who was going to rent. And they would usually have their daughter with them. And somehow we met. And I remember the first time we met, we didn't like say anything. We were both super shy. And we kind of just like ran around past each other because we didn't know what to say. And then one of us finally worked up the nerve to be like, hi. We exchanged names and then we were like friend, instant friends after that. And so um, usually whenever she would come, if I was there, she would like knock on the door and be like, can I play? And like, she was like one of my first like, like friends. And like, I just loved every time she came over. Like we had so much fun and we would just like play all the time. So yeah, and then whenever I did activities, I have a video on that too. Like I would make friends, but those were like short term things. Like they were like summer camps, day camps, week camps, however long the activity was, was kind of like how long that friendship lasted in a sense. Cause it was like, everyone went off their own different ways and like, we didn't see each other anymore. Um, but yeah, so like my peer interaction really came when I did my activities. If there wasn't a specific activity going on, if I was not going to golf or dance or like whatever, I wasn't talking to kids who are my age. I would say that that bumped up more once I got to high school because I was playing golf so um, consistently. And so I interacted with a lot of girls and that was really cool and fun. Um, not as much interaction with boys, we moved. And so there was some interaction with kids in the neighborhood. When we lived in Akron, that I always remembered as being like my favorite summer ever um, because I did the first tee for that entire summer. I was going up there every single day. So like five days a week, I was spending like probably a good six hours or so up here on this golf course with all of these kids. And like, that was my favorite summer ever because it's like, I was getting constant socialization. Um, and there were moments <laughs> when things got on my nerves. Like I remember we'd have lunch and like the, um, the truck would come in and bring all the lunch. And we had been outside all day in the summer. So we were like, famished and super thirsty and we're kids so we didn't always drink like the water that we needed to be drinking so we would come and just like run over to the juice and start like drinking all this juice and the, one of the ladies who like volunteered she would always yell at us get out of the juice <laughs> and like she was always like which i get now back then she didn't want us to drink it all before lunch um and i remember one day telling my dad like can we just go home and he was like you don't want to eat with your friends and i was like no like i just want to go home like mom doesn't yell at me when i get juice <laughs> i was that was i was 12 that summer um just because like literally all day every day the entire summer like i was around kids and i was making friends and like things were happening and going on as like our own little world and the flip side of this coin um because again balance and duality um was I lonely sometimes as a kid? Heck yeah. Um, it's actually funny because in retrospect, I think there's a lot of things sometimes you don't remember, like because you get older and like you just start to forget your childhood. Um, but I kept like really detailed journals most of my life, like once I turned seven. Um, and I have a lot of like poetry and like song lyrics and stuff that I wrote. And it's interesting going back sometimes and just realizing like how many times the word like alone or lonely came up in like things that I wrote. Like a therapist probably would have been like, let's chat, hon, what's going on? Um, and so it's actually interesting because like if I, if I lean on my memory alone, I'll be like, oh yeah, I was lonely sometimes, but it wasn't that bad. Um, but if I like go back and read the things that I wrote and how I was feeling and what was happening, sometimes it was something as simple as like we could have been driving to the store and I would have seen like two kids playing on the side of the road and like that made me sad and I was like, I don't get to do those things. Um, so there was definitely absolutely um, loneliness and like voids of socialization that happened to me at different periods throughout my childhood growing up. 
Um, and I would also say, I think that some of that may have played a part in some of my shyness. Obviously, like, there's homeschool kids who aren't shy and there's kids who like go to public school every day and they're super shy. Um, but like, I just remember like feeling really nervous and panicky every time I had to like go somewhere and like introduce myself and I'd be like, uh, um, and like, I was always talking like this and people would be like, what's your name? And they couldn't hear me. Right. <laughs> and they'd be like, what's your name? Candace. Excuse me. And then like, and that was always like a thing. And then my parents would be like, speak up. And like, it was a thing. Um, so I, I definitely feel like versus like the year that I, you know, did the first tea, like I had to like introduce myself so many times and so many kids would run and be like, what's your name? And they're like, by the end of the day, I was just like chatting with them and talking and stuff. Um, I was still a lot quieter before I went to college than when I came back. But at the end of the day, like anyone who might be wondering like, oh, I'm homeschooling my only child or she was homeschooling my only child. What was that like? It was lonely. Like, I'm not going to say that it's not. I would be... Um, I would be lying to myself and to anyone who asks this question of me if I don't say that because um, it doesn't really matter how many like princess tea parties you have or outings or things that you go to when you don't have someone that is on your level who just wants to talk about the last Lisa McGuire episode or something like that, when you don't have those things and you don't have someone who's on your level that you can practice talking to, not an authority figure or an adult who's, who's telling you things, but like just someone who's on your level, when you don't have that, it is going to have an impact on you. Um, you know, I had those experiences, but on a somewhat inconsistent basis. Just make sure there are consistent outlets and opportunities to do that for your child to have that interaction and to have that space even more so when there isn't the direct interaction of a um of a sibling it's just something that cannot be replicated it can't be replicated by a parent or grandparent or neighbor or like whatever it, it has to be exactly what it is like kids and need I think that for most of my life i believe that like leaving home and going to college was going to be like the salve for all of those things and in many ways it was like I have so many such a tremendous community of people in my life and I will give you all one story that I think is is kind of funny that will give you an example of that um and then I'll close this out so it won't be super long no one even knows this so I'm outing myself a little bit here before I get to the bigger story um in high school I actually joined MySpace I thought that I was going to create a songwriting page and get discovered and be famous that did not happen um but it was just a page um I, again I didn't have like friends in real life and like I didn't go to a school so no one really followed my page except for a couple random people thing that like sometimes I talked to a few times but it was really just a page of me like doing like basic little coding and changing my wallpapers out but I mentioned it a lot of times like in my journals as it being like a social savior because the fact that I got to like communicate with kids up there and like see different people hopefully they were all kids and they weren't like axe murderers um you know was just like it was something that I really looked forward to um and I didn't tell anybody about it because like social media was so new at the time my parents were like very adamant about like you don't know who these people are on the other side of the screen like don't be getting on these things like it could be dangerous which you know was definitely true um and so I did my space for a while and then I think I just you know it was whatever I got off of it and then in high school um Facebook was blowing up all of our family was on there I didn't even really know anything about it um, and I had a relative who invited me so I got on and then like all of like my friends from like sports and stuff were up there so I was like connecting with them and family and stuff and that was another thing that really brought me a reprieve um, and I did it completely undercover because even though I was a rule follower I was like this is fulfilling like <laughs> this social need that I have um, and then it got found out and so I got kicked off and I was like grounded for like a few months and then like I got back on. Um, and it's something you can look back on now and like it's funny but I think those are all kind of examples and on one hand it was like yes I broke a rule of like not using the site that I wasn't supposed to use but at the same time that was really a sign the fact that me a kid who was very quiet and much a rule follower felt the need to like still do this I think showed how important it was to me at the time to have those kinds of interactions and that's one of the reasons why I do really like social media and the internet for all of its faults and all of its problems um I always go back to that ability to connect because I think that for some people depending on their situations 
having that virtual ability to connect may be the only thing that they have and sometimes that is very fulfilling and it is really helpful. Sometimes people are like, what should I do? I can't really tell you what to do because like I said, that summer the first tea, like that did it for me. Or like being on, you know, MySpace or Facebook, like really helped and did that for me. Um, I just think it's important to make those opportunities available and to make them um, consistent. So in a nutshell, yes, it's important. Yes, it's going to be a heck of a challenge, um, but it's worth it and it's an attempt you should make. Um, and again, like I said, some, uh, some families are really plugged into community in different ways. They may not have to <clears throat> be as intentional and go searching as much for these opportunities. Um, versus if you live out somewhere that's rural or you're not plugged into certain like groups and stuff like that, it might take a little bit more work. Share this with them, you know, like I wish I'd had, you know, someone who had been homeschooled and been through that experience to like talk to or like see them especially if you weren't homeschooled yourself like that was always a hard thing for me it's like expressing that to my family I always felt that it was hard for them to truly understand because it's like you don't have share my experience so like how can you understand it um and as a parent like you might feel a little protective or defensive over your choices because you're doing the best for your kid and if your kid is giving you feedback and like this aspect isn't working for me that can be kind of hard because you might feel like you're failing at something and you're not it's just part of the experience no different than a kid who a parent who sends their kid to public school and they're coming back and they're being bullied that's not a reflection of the parent's experience to put them in that environment or it's not anyone's fault it's just something you have to deal with and navigate so yeah i don't want you all to feel scared or feel like this isn't something that you should do i think um you know like I said, just being mindful and creating those opportunities um, and letting your child lead a little bit, you know, don't go and like put the, you know, you could run and put them in something every single week and the kid might love that or they might be like, mom, chill. Like, I just want to like watch Netflix this weekend. Like, I'm good. Like, I don't need to talk to anybody right now. And that's fine. Like I said, I was perfectly happy in a book. There were many times I did not feel like I needed to talk to anyone. Um, sometimes we would go to the library during a reading hour and the kids would be screaming and I would just be like, this is too much noise. Like we need to go home. Um, and sometimes that's true and it's fine. Like I didn't want to socialize like every single living, breathing moment of the day. Um, but then sometimes you do. And so, um, yeah, hopefully... This was not too rambly and it was helpful again. Um, I feel like I say that every time, but just please keep asking questions and leaving comments um, and I'll try to, you know, address as many topics as I can or I feel like I'm able to. Um, and yeah, good luck on your homeschooling journey. I will see you in the next video.